River dolphins are some of the most bizarre cetaceans alive today. Many have adapted to live in some of the world's most tannin-rich or muddy waters, reducing their eyes and increasing their electro-sense and echolocation to unparalleled levels. Despite the outward similarities between all of the world's living and very recently extinct river dolphins, and despite all of them still belonging to the toothed whale family, they are technically rather distantly related to one another. Their shared traits are a product of convergent evolution. When unrelated organisms evolve similar traits to solve a similar evolutionary problem, this evolutionary phenomenon can occur in very distantly related animals, such as the phytosaurs, crocodilians, and temnospondyl amphibians, or it can occur in more closely related groups, such as the four independent river dolphin families Iniidae, Lipotidae, Platanistidae, and Pontoporiidae. Only three genera of these families are freshwater enjoyers the extinct Yangtze river dolphin, and still-living species of the Platanista and Inia genera. Platanista is the only living genus of the Platanistidae river dolphins, with only two living species, the Ganges river dolphin and the Indus river dolphin. Both are the most enigmatic of the toothed whales. They are rarely seen, so their true numbers are hard to calculate. They also happen to be one of the weirdest living toothed whales due to their extreme adaptations to the murky waters of South Asia. They have virtually lost their eyes. They can only be seen as tiny peepholes in their rubbery flesh. Instead of sight, these animals use extremely developed echolocation to sense through their world. This is exemplified by the huge, craggy, hemispherical crests of bone over the forehead of the skull that covers the fatty melon organ used for echolocation. The extinct forms of Platanistidae are all marine, so they don't help explain how the modern Platanista evolved into freshwater forms, and only a handful are known. On the other hand, the greater group to which the Platanistids belonged, the Platanistoidea, contains four other families that make up massive evolutionary lineages, from the Oligocene to the Miocene epochs. This includes the Oceanian Wipatiids that keep being found and described out of New Zealand. The same situation is happening with the other freshwater river dolphins of the Inia genus. All of its extinct relatives are marine, making the evolutionary journey into freshwater a mystery. A huge, multinational team of paleontologists has recently published a paper on a new platinistid dolphin in the journal Science Advances that helps to fill in the ocean to river dolphin gaps. This new dolphin isn't particularly spectacular in a complete sense. The holotype specimen, MUSM-4017, is just an isolated noggin, missing the tip of the snout. Since it's a whale, a skull is thankfully enough to designate a new genus and species of critter, so the research team named the critter Pebanista Iacuruna. The Pebanista part comes from the Pebas formation, an ancient lake, and the Ista part of the genus names of the living platinistid dolphins. The species name comes from the Quichua name for a mythical water monster. There have also been some other bits found that cannot be 100% attributed to Pebanista, but most likely belong to it. MUSM-3593, an isolated chunk of the snout, and MUSM-4759, an isolated ear bone. The Pebanista holotype was found all the way back in 2018, eroding out of sediment layers that belonged to the Miocene-aged Pebas formation of western Amazonia, specifically Rio Napo, Loreto, Peru. The Pebas formation is an enormous layer of sediment covering 1 million square kilometers across Brazil, Peru, Ecuador, and Colombia. The reason this layer of sediment is so damn big is because it is probably what is left of an even bigger prehistoric lake, the eponymous Pebas Lake. I know some of you are probably wondering how anyone knows the age of this massive layer of sediment. The answer lies in the study of paleontology. Paleontology is the study of the microscopic confetti that has littered the world around us since the dawn of time. These teeny tiny organisms and bits of organisms are often resistant to the types of decay that can rip apart a sauropod skeleton. They also easily become lodged in the rocks of deep time. Paleontology helps paleontologists date layers of rocks when radioactive isotopes are of no help. It also tells you all sorts of neat facts, like climate, flora diversity, and ecosystem health over deep time. The painstaking paleontological work of past researchers has proven that the Pebas formation layers from which the dolphin specimen was found are between paleontological zones T13 and T15. 
This means the specimen is from the late early Miocene to middle Miocene, so about 17 to 14 million years ago. As you can see, the 698mm by 281mm skull is unique for having a long and robust snout edged by big ol' snaggle teeth. Like the living Platanista, Hebanista here also has some obnoxiously large bony crests jutting out of the forehead and over the skull. It's probably a safe bet that a nasty fatty melon was plum wedged up in there. The authors think that the huge teeth, long robust snout, and huge muscle attachments in the skull would have meant Pebanista was one of them raptorial feeders, quickly pursuing all sorts of swift prey and snagging them in its maw. The team tallied up all the traits preserved in the skull and threw that data into the phylogenetic software of their choice, along with already collected traits of a bunch of toothed whales, to get a good reading on what this thing is related to. Their analysis found that Pebanista is, more or less, without a shadow of a doubt, a member of the Platanistidae family. The analysis also found that the other extinct Platanistids, Homatodelphus and Zorrhachis, formed a group that is sister to a group containing Pebanista and the living Platanista, making this new Amazonian fossil river dolphin the closest fossil relative to the living South Asian river dolphins. Another unique feature of Pebanista is its size. Let's bring in Mr. Man from Animal Planet's The Most Extreme to get a good visual size comparison. Thanks to some maths, the author team was able to estimate Pebanista's size at between 2.8 to 3.5 meters, or 9.18 to 11.48 feet in length. However, the authors make note that the math they have used has been shown to underestimate the body length of tooth whales before, so they used the answers they got as a minimum estimate. Pebanista may have grown even larger. Thanks, Mr. Man. The Platanistids were extremely diverse and global. They adapted to various ecological niches to avoid competition. The peak of this ocean-going river dolphin extravaganza was during the early Miocene, spurred on by global cooling and the sinking of the Amazon. The Middle Miocene climatic optimum occurred right after this, shifting the world to a much warmer hothouse climate. The almost completely marine river dolphins started dying out, and other toothed whales began diversifying and taking advantage of the good fortune. The Pebanista author team suggests that this global shakeup may have pushed surviving platanistoid river dolphins into freshwater habitats. This would definitely explain the convergent evolution, as multiple groups of these dolphins went back and forth from ocean to freshwater as climates slowly changed and other animals adapted around that change. When Pebanista was alive and sloshing, much of the Amazon rainforest was Amazon Swamp and Amazon Delta. These vast wetlands saw saltwater encroachment a few times, forcing critters to become brackish water enjoyers or perish. Gripasuchus, one of the largest crocodilians to ever live, and a close extinct relative of today's gharials, saw a similar marine to freshwater and sometimes brackish water evolutionary trajectory in Asia and South America. The authors bring this up as a special example due to both the croc and dolphin also having long pointy snouts lined with big pointy teeth for snagging slippery things. Both also kept the large sizes of their marine ancestors while their living descendants shrank considerably and became extinct outside of Asia. This may have been due to the number of resources and habitat space available when the Amazon rainforest was submerged. Pebanista lived with many animals that still call the Amazon home, big and small turtles, fish of all types, giant rodents, as well as many other crocodilians, such as caimans. But also, this version of the Amazon was home to many animals we might consider exotic, like giant ground sloths of both terrestrial and semi-aquatic types, the charismatic and completely alien South American ungulates, the shell-cracking Natusuchus, the giant pelican-faced Morosuchus, and the also supergiant caiman Purosaurus. Imagine if some baby megalodon swam up these wetlands as a safe space before going out to sea. Terror birds and giant armadillos were also present in these regions during this time. There was a lot going on for our big silly river dolphin to contend with. That's just the law of the jungle. 
For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.